Wow, I just drove by the Weston Pass turnoff south of Leadville, and it made me think of the time when I took a Chevrolet, Chevrolet Citation over Weston Pass. And if you've been over Weston Pass, you know that would be a difficult haul for a Citation, if you remember what those look like like a pumpkin seed sitting low to the ground. They weren't necessarily bad cars. Just so you know, we are south of Leadville and I just passed a bunch of really cool looking cabins and too late turned my camera on to catch them. So now the camera is on. What I'd like to do is I would like to record from Leadville to Minner, Mini Turn, would be the way you would spell that, but apparently the way you say it is Minern. That's how the locals used to pronounce it anyway. I don't know if there are any locals left that that live there. I don't know. Probably. some neat old buildings over there. So Leadville's a neat place. I think it's about 11,000 feet, 10 or 11,000 feet in elevation. So it's already quite high country. The sagebrush around here is markedly smaller than the sagebrush down lower. So that does say something, and sagebrush is some hardy stuff. I think sagebrush is the official coating of Western Colorado. Probably the unofficial coating, but I think there are probably more sagebrush covered hillsides than anything else in western Colorado. What in the hell is that? Gigantic trailer park it looks like. Oh yeah, it's pretty. Well, maybe it's not that big. It just caught it from the right angle to make it look giant. It's pretty large. Now, for some reason, my GPS wants me to go west right there. And that might not be a bad way to go. It might be around a lake and I might bypass Leadville. But Leadville is a neat town, and I like seeing Leadville. And I have already been fooled by my, my mapping app today one time, which added, well, added 80 miles and one hour to my route today. So I, I'm not feeling very trustworthy. A few years ago, several years ago, really, probably 15 years ago, maybe 20, I was coming through here with my, my oldest sister, and we stopped in Leadville, and we're having some food, and there were, I think, three or four Lamborghini Countach, I think that's how, how you pronounce that, that were driving up through here, all different colors, sort of the M&M type of a color, the M&M red, M&M yellow, M&M blue. And I think there was a white, which would be an M&M that you've sucked on for a while. And so if you don't know, most people do, Leadville is, is a mining town. The term Leadville nods to what they probably mined here. There are tailings piles everywhere 
from the old mines. It's just a cool place. But everything over to our right is basically tailing piles. Everything to our left, for that matter, tailing piles. They have these big boulders that they've drilled. I don't know what that was. Maybe a raffle or something? I don't know what they were doing with those. But big boulders that were drilled, there was a, some numbers that were, had all been drilled. And there's a big bunch of them sitting there. Maybe somebody who watches this channel could tell me what those mean. I think it was just going to take me around, yeah, around the back way. I'll bet it would have dropped me back into Leadville. It would have had to. So, yeah, just a, probably just a little bit shorter of a road. But then again, like I said, I'm not trusting my, I'm not trusting Google right now. I'll trust my memory. Some neat old mining equipment. There was a guy that had a rock shop out near Vernal, Utah, who, as a kid, worked in Leadville. And he was he was telling me a little bit about working up here. But the lightning storms they were ferocious, um, and really, that's mainly what I got out of what he was talking about. I think that guy has long since passed away. I believe. I think his rock shop was closed. It's a real shame. I mean, that was a cool thing. He was an old timer. And it would have been neat to, to know more than just there was a lot of lightning storms up here. There were a lot of lightning. There are a lot of lightning storms up here. They rebuilt this road a few years ago. This is much, much nicer. I like the old road, though, because it had a lot more character. But it was also, I think this was almost like a 90 degree corner here. I mean, like you have to stop to turn. The downtown of Leadville is pretty cool. This one brick building that we see with all the windows in it and the, the flag above it, those bricks are rotten. It's, it's bizarre that you can just dig. Oh, I hear some sirens. I guess if I see the siren, I'll pull over. If I see, yeah. I'm looking. But yeah, those bricks are rotten. It's, it's weird. And there's a mining museum up here. I've seen a little bit of it. I'd like to see more of it. Leadville is is really a touristy town. I think you can tell. It's not a ski town, though. But it's it's a summer tourist town. Probably a winter town, too. Probably they do backcountry skiing and snowmobiling and things like that up here. Because that's pretty popular, and you don't really need a ski hill for that. And then there are like five 14,000-foot mountains you know, south of Leadville, going all the way down past Buena Vista to Salida. I did try to film those earlier because I came up that way, but it was really rainy, and I, I couldn't get a good I couldn't get a good view of those mountains. 
They're really pretty, pretty 14ers. When I was a kid, there was a story about Leadville that when a girl wanted to get married, she would work at a gas station or a restaurant in Leadville and she would get married. That was a thing that, that, that how, that's how, that's how you got married in Leadville, I guess. I'm not really sure what that means. I mean, maybe there were a bunch of guys here and that's how a girl got to be seen. I'm not really sure. Oh man, that's a crappy place. <laughs> Monthly Studios, I, I, I think not. in this way. I typically get gas in Leadville, but I'm also typically not working when I'm in Leadville. I'm usually coming back from rock collecting or gym collecting or whatever, or just driving through from another state. I, I sometimes come this way. Actually, a lot of the times I come down through here. So I really don't want to go to Copper Mountain today. That's not a bad way to go though. And the old, the um, Climax Molybdenum mine is pretty neat to see. But we're gonna head over this direction, pretty historic and cool area, and also a pretty interesting pass that we'll get to Yeah, the 10th Mountain used to train up here. 10th Mountain Division. This is where they got their winter training. Way back when. And you can still see the you know, remnants of the barracks and, and the, the grounds. And it seemed like if for a few years, Jeep would have a four wheel drive, I don't know, uh, four wheel a thon up here out at the Tenth Mountain camp. I guess they would have it. That seemed pretty cool. I never went to one of them because I was usually out somewhere else, like up in the mountains, you know, looking for rocks. Or panning, or you know, something. Something like that. Occasionally fishing. So we are in the 14ers today, and you can't see the tops of them because of the rain. Oh. So there we go. This is basically a little subdivision on the outskirts of Leadville.
I'm not sure what the speed is here. I'm not getting any good information. I think I went right by a speed on the side, but I was busy spraying stuff in my eyes. I'm just going to assume we're 65. This looks like a 65 mile an hour load. And that is my best information right now. There's an old, old, old guy driving a car. Yeah, I'm thinking we're probably 65. These guys are moving at a pretty good clip. Well, I've got an advisory speed up here, that'll tell me. There is also a railroad track that goes through here, which is pretty neat. And I don't know how it gets down into the into the bottom of this of this pass, but but it does. We'll see what I need here in a little while. Okay, I know the speed limit is above 50. Okay, there we go. Speed limit inside finally popped up. I don't know if that's actually an old cabin. You may not have seen that, but there was a a cabin, but the logs looked like modern logs. It was fence? There was a fence around it. It, it didn't look right. 
that, on the other hand, looks like a real cabinet. That guy's looking for firewood. A chainsaw at his feet. I guess he's looking for firewood. Or looking for, I don't know. I would actually like to find some of the bigger, older pines. Maybe some of the, the dead stuff up in northern, up in the northern part of Colorado for guitar tops. Like to find some old spruce, maybe. I kind of got on that kick a couple of years ago, but I've just been pulled a different direction all the time. I've never been able to go up and try to find something. No. Funny that the asphalt has, has developed washboards like a dirt road will. Sure, it took a lot longer time for So I've got this guy following me and he's like, he'll lurch ahead and get close to me. Then he'll, I don't know, he'll get sidetracked and back up or back away. And then he'll lurch ahead and get behind me again. My sister made a good point. She said it would be nice to be able to see, like have a mirror or something. So when I'm talking about traffic, you can see what I'm talking about. This is one of those one of those moments where you just have to take my word for it. it just seems like odd behavior. So we're getting close to the top of this really cool canyon. There's also a, I believe it's a zinc mine down here. And I've seen some videos of, of people going through it and looking at it. And it's an interesting mine because it starts up on the side of, of the cliff and goes all the way to the bottom. And it's, it's quite a tall mine, I'm sure, inside. There are a lot of buildings still there and there are there there is housing houses right like on the cliffside that are abandoned they're really cool 
The whole thing is really neat. That guy's getting on my ass again. I'm actually going to let this guy get around me. Go on. Get around me. I'm tired of you following me. He wants to go fast. <laughs> Who am I to tell him not to? So, yeah, get it. I mean, I, I would rather pay attention to what you're seeing, make sure this camera is doing good, than racing around and there's a big bug or something in front of the lens. Today's been a good day as far as rain goes because it's kept the bugs down. I have washed the window a lot, but it's been mainly gnats and mosquitoes and, and not all that often. Oh, that's right, I forgot. We're actually going down to the the 10th Mountain Division camp. I forgot. Yeah, this is the, the first little pass that we go through, we'll go over. It is really, really beautiful up here. It's like, it's just amazing. Yeah, I'm not seeing any of the of the foundations right now. You certainly couldn't because you can't turn and look. That guy looked. He was going to look, or he wants to get behind me again. Camp Hell, yeah, Camp Hell, H A L E. I did get that. So today I have gone so far 503 miles on this route. I guess I'll be doing this for a couple more weeks. I don't know that I'll be getting back down in this neck of the woods, but I'll probably be back on I-70 and I'll probably back, be back in Junction a couple weeks, maybe more. I'm certainly not wanting to make a habit out of this. I'm putting enough miles on this little car as it is. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you gotta help out a little bit. So, yeah. yeah, there's a railroad tunnel around here. Oh, the railroad track is over to our left right now. And there's 
if I remember right, there's no ELC to tunnel. Not that that's that interesting. It's just the fact that the railroad is up here. <laughs> How the hell did they get it up here? Oh yeah, we're passing over the top of it right now. And there's a siding too. Look at that, interesting. If you don't know what a siding is, it's basically a, an extra an extra track that you can park a train on and get off the main line so another train can get around you. Or you can park cars there so they can be unloaded or you know, whatever, it's just a, yeah, like an exit. Okay, now, now we're getting close to the top of, of the canyon. Chuck was holding a few vehicles back. up here. This is almost a winter's day up here. It is probably, it's pretty cold out there. 40s, I, I don't imagine it's in the 30s. Probably in the 40s though, right now. At 5 in the afternoon. Anyway, this is a pretty cool, cool mine. That, that's just kind of hanging out here abandoned on the side of this cliff. Like I said, we'll get to it and you'll see. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. Yeah, it's a little S curve. Is something I remember about this road. That's that it was placed. What about the S curve? Up on top was this S curve. There's also a little town down here called Red Cliff. And it's a, a cool little town. I'm assuming a mining town. Or maybe a railroad town. I think a mining town. I wish I could think of the mine. Again, if any anyone of you that watch my videos knows these things, feel free to comment. And if you watch my videos and you're curious about stuff, go look at the comment section because a lot of people have commented commented about a lot of interesting things. Well, that would be interesting to you if you're watching my videos. Or should I say our videos, the collective. Yeah. I'm joking. I saw a video that the riding shotgun character like his name, Swade in him is Mountain Mike, did a couple months ago when they had closed Vail Pass down. And he came, I believe it was this road he came up, I think he went up to Leadville, and then he went back down over um, towards Copper Mountain, which we would have gone if we wouldn't have turned at, at the other side of Leadville. 
we would have gone by the climax molybdenum the mine. I believe that he was up here. And I don't know if he knows about the trough road. Because you can bypass, you can get around Bell Pass by turning up 131 and at the at State Ridge, the little town, State Ridge. Make a left turn, or I'm sorry, make a right turn. Yeah, coming up from the south. Make a right turn on the trough road and you find yourself in Kremlin. If you want to go back to the interstate, you can take Highway 9 and go right back to the interstate and end up in Dillon on the other side of Bell Pass. And it's probably more miles than this is, but it's certainly a, most likely a, a much less, much less dangerous drive in the winter, for sure. But I really like the trough road. It is, it has saved me a lot. It has helped me, you know, get, get over this rough winter, stay out of the worst of the weather, and, you know, being able to get home without sitting waiting for a pass to reopen. So this is me. You can't see. Down below us is the road that takes us to Red Cliff. And you can't see Red Cliff, but it's down that canyon. And I think I did see the railroad track down there. So maybe that is a railroad, a railroad down. There's a good chance you won't be able to see just what kind of a, of a hillside we're on. Just, we just have to see if the, if the view allows you to see just how cool this road is. And when I say cool, I mean it's a cliff over to the left. In places, it's like a vertical drop right down to the bottom. And it's probably 800 feet maybe down there, 500 feet, maybe 1,000 feet depending on where we're at on the road. Oh yeah, it's way the heck down there. Oh yeah, I'd say a thousand feet easy. Sadly, I can't, I can't point the, you know, I can't show you. I just have to tell you and you have to take my word for it. But if you haven't been here, and you, you're interested in driving this road. This is a pretty cool road. It's an experience in itself, just driving the road. I was hanging out with a, a lady, now well, years ago. Her and I came up here one day and we stopped where the old houses were and we walked that area we were basically trespassing on mine property, but I don't know what that even means. You know, I don't even know if there's even really an owner left for this mine. But we, we went inside some buildings and looked around, and a lot of people have done that since. And I again, I don't know if anyone really owns anything up here anymore. I could find out if I was really, really curious, I could probably talk to the Bureau of Land Management, or I could, I could probably, if I could find the right website, just find that plot of land and see who, who the last owner was or who the current owner was and see what the status of it is. The reason I'm going through all the gymnastics of saying this is because I don't necessarily think that this mine is owned by anyone anymore. I think it could easily be abandoned. Well, I can see the houses. You won't be able to see them, I don't think. Maybe. 
But there was a, a little community up here, a mining town, right on the edge of a cliff. I mean, it's really cool. Oh yeah, I'm looking down, it is super, super steep and super cool. And there's no way I can show it to you. <laughs> But if your curiosity is is, is is getting you, you can probably find out about it. You can search Highway 24 between, and I'll pronounce it the way it's spelled, Miniturn, M-I-N-I-T-U-R-N, and Leadville. And as, like I say, the, the locals call it Minern. But you can search that and you can probably find information about the mine, including photographs and videos. And you can see what I'm talking about. It's quite, quite a drive. But it's one of those drives that I'd really have to be going the other way. You know, I, I would just really need another camera. I'd have to get out, stop the vehicle, get out, and film it and you know, I'm not going to do well yeah I'm not going to do that today I need to get home it's raining I've driven over 500 miles I still have about 150 to go so yeah If you're lazy and you don't want to do any of that research, but you're still curious, just imagine that there's a sheer drop off right on the other side, on, on to the left, right down to a river, a roaring river. And that's pretty close. <laughs> that's pretty close to what it would look like. Oh yeah, it's chilly, chilly. It's a nice turnout, but it, you can't see anything. We're already past all of the... We're actually about down for the bottom. We're getting, getting close. This is a really heavy rain for Colorado. I mean, this is widespread and heavy. I did see a little bit about it on, on the, the weather. There's an upper level low, I guess, off to our north and west. And it's swinging moisture up to Colorado. Lots of it right now. This is unusual. We usually get an afternoon thunderstorm, or we get something like that. But we get what we call the monsoon around here, which comes up from Arizona. There's a cool trestle 
pipe there. Did you install that? I think that's a pipe, not a railroad track. Maybe it's a trestle to hold a pipe up. So this is a pretty unusual, unusual rainfall for what the kind of weather we've been having, you know, in the last several years. Another one of the climate lies, they're all lies, pretty much all the climate hoax, is that when things get cooler, things, you know, the weather just, things dry off, dry up, whatever. They, they say, well, the hotter it gets, the more storms we'll have, the more precipitation and blah, blah, blah. That's not true. The records show that the cooler weather we have, but the more rain we get. It's cool and wet, hot and dry. Oh yeah, I've got a milkshake that might be melted a little bit. Oh yeah. I stopped in Buena Vista and got a chocolate shake, breaking my my no sugar policy, just because it's such a long drive, and I could use the you know I could use the the boost, and there's a lot of good fat you know shake, and so it was the girl mixed it I mean the old fashioned way. She actually had to dig ice cream out of a big tub of ice cream and put it in an old pine kind of malt, you know, blender kind of thing. And it came out not much softer than when she dug it out with her with her um, ice cream spooner. She was having a hell of a time getting it out of the, of the container. It sat for an hour and it's finally starting. You know, that thing didn't say thank you when I slowed down to under 35. It's actually still quite, quite thick. But that's good. This will give me something to, to do, have a little, get a little sugar rush. But slowly. I probably should take it slowly, not, not in one big shot, because I might get the jitters, because I don't eat sugar that much anymore. So this is, we're getting close to the downtown of Minerum, and it used to look a lot like Crested View. Sort of these really old, cool old, old buildings. But Minim got a big facelift, and maybe it's owned by a big corporation. A lot of the the old buildings got updated or or just erased. And the downtown doesn't have the same flavor that it did have. But it's still nice. It's just that some of the history of, of, of Minern is gone. Replaced by someone's idea of a quaint mountain town. Thank you. 
I like this koi. I've always liked this this outcrop. It's really not an outcrop. It was probably cut down a little bit to get the road in here. But just a neat little feature. So we made it. We did good. Our next move will be getting on the interstate. This road goes for like another mile or so, if my memory serves me right. And I'll eventually get up on I-70. And I think I'll probably continue on down to the turnoff to Highway 131 and just go back on 131. Still have a ways to go. <laughs> Well, I'm getting closer, and I haven't let Google Maps fool me since it fooled me earlier today up in Crested Butte, where it, it said I could get through Kevlar Pass, but I couldn't. So, yes, I've been fooled, but yet I'm older and wiser now. And I did not let Google Earth, Google Maps fool me again. But I do get tricked by this, this on-ramp. It's, it's kind of a strange... strange little on-ramp. But it looks like it's also been changed. <laughs> so, we'll see. Ah, uh, yeah. I usually, I usually miss this this turn off. I have to turn around and go back and get it. Thank you for letting me in. Yes, you're letting me in. Okay. Let's go. This guy get around with me. Get into this lane. <laughs> Quite a pleasure. At some point today, I mentioned that this car could use a bath. <laughs> Whether it's actually going to be clean or not after being blasted by 
a bunch of highway highway water. I don't know. But I've only got four, five more miles before I can get off of this this gigantic washing machine. So I'm pleased about that. This is one hell of a rain. It's rained pretty much all day. Even when I started out this morning at four in the morning, or well, five in the morning, there was just light rain down from Craig all the way into Meeker, all the way to Junction, just little bits and pieces of it. I mean, there's a lot of moisture up in the, in the atmosphere. Um, I do like this little pond here at this exit. I think that's Edwards. Neat little lake. Pond, I think, is probably a more accurate term for it. I still can't get anything out of this shake. And it's sat and cooled for an hour, or warmed up. I guess I'll have to let it sit a little bit longer. So our exit should be next. Wow, you probably didn't see that magpie. Well, he just went flying right at the level, rooftop level. These cars right across the right across the road. Might be. Quite a, quite an experiment, an experience. Okay, so here we are at Walcott, and I think I'll end the video here. I think, I think we've had a, a pretty interesting 
interesting video, a rainstorm, which I don't know if, if it's even worth, you know, doing anything with. But. We'll see. So, good. That way. That way, okay. Go, 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 girl. All right. So, if you're driving somewhere today, Drive careful, and I'll, I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.